whether he had a scheduled tweet uh, for today's <laughs> match, but uh, we'll have to go back and check it out afterwards. But as you can see, G2 huddling up, preparing to take on PSG Talon. PSG Talon have been, I think, improving as, uh, as the tournament goes on, but uh, to say that about G2 would be probably the largest understatement of the tournament. Oh, yeah. This team has looked absolutely extraordinary, and we are already in to champion select for our second game of the day here for the MSI Rumble stage. Gwen gonna be banned away here by G2. Very interested to see what their first pick priority is going to be. I feel like they've used first pick better than almost every other team so far this tournament. The amount of times they've managed to finagle a Wukong and things like yeah. this uh, has been very, very impressive. But the Kaiser going to be banned away here. Second time of asking here on G2's side. Of course, a very different first uh, round of bans here in comparison to our first uh, game of the day. We're going to continue to be taken away. And I think many people are in agreement that G2 has had by far the best meta read. Going, coming into the Rumble stage, there were still a lot of questions uh, as the group stage didn't really give a proper idea uh, due to the big intra-group differences as to what the performance of specific teams were going to be. But G2, with the run they've had so far within Rumble, is incredibly impressive. And we're already starting to see a lot of teams kind of pivot, follow G2, follow the path that they have set. And I don't expect it to be any different. There is a ban towards Bay there. Yeah. Bay, a player that we have followed for <laughs> yes, quite a have. while. Uh, <laughs> the tumultuous path of Bay. Maybe we get to talk about this game. Uh, we'll, we'll see what actually ends up happening as the Ari taken away, one of the other big ones uh, that has been yep. blinded basically exclusively uh, whenever it's open, which is not very often. And for G2, personally, I wouldn't mind something like LeBlanc, but the Callista is extremely yeah. high on the priority list, uh, priority list as well. Yeah, I was thinking uh, the LeBlanc myself, but uh, Callista has seen a lot of bans more recently. Certainly has been a bit of a breakout Eddie Carey so far this tournament and plays so well into what G2 want to do, which is team fight, dive, get on top of the carries, finish the fight fast. And that's exactly what Callista allows you to do. And so set up for one of these, you know, if they just respond with Diana Yasuo after this, I would not be surprised in the slightest because their Callista, Diana, uh, Yasuo compositions have been working extraordinarily well thus far. And that is going to be Tristana locked away for Unified, certainly has been focusing on that pick a lot so far this tournament. And there is the Viego, the default jungler, uh, is what it feels like here uh, during this tournament if the Wukong is banned away, which he most likely is. And with the Tristana being picked up as okay, pivot away there from Yeah, uh, not Duan. going to be it. Um, I get punished for the hover once again. That's all right. PSG, to me, needs to win through Unified and Kaiwing or Hanabi on something like Gnar, on something like Cannon, uh, because Juan and Bay have even like, taken their performance alone. You don't want to play through them and try and get wins through that way. Uh, and they're also up against what is currently looking like the, <laughs> by a large margin, best performing yes. mid jungle duo. Um, in the tournament, uh, Caps has been insane, and I, I wouldn't mind a LeBlanc pick up here at this point. It also denies a possible Lee LeBlanc combo I would uh, agree. from PSG. Works really well together with the Viego as well for setting up individual picks, and it's, it's Caps on LeBlanc. And fortunately for all of us, <laughs> we get to watch. Well, let's see what Bay has a as, as a response uh, to this LeBlanc, because there's not a lot of great options still left on the table. You could imagine that he would uh, personally love Lissandra. to have picked up the uh, the Vex. And yes, Lissandra is certainly an option. Um, there is the set. It's been a while since happen. Morgana was right. the answer as well, because uh, I think that was like seven years ago. Oh. Is he going to play set? I, I because think, that would be I, very I, I, funny. <laughs> That's definitely not happening. <laughs> or it shouldn't happen. Uh, we never oh, know. He's going to play nothing. That is the theory. You can see Yankos very happy about the situation, <laughs> uh, exclaiming his joy uh, in how the uh, champ select um, fell over there just a little bit. I imagine something went a little bit wrong and we'll hop back in as soon as we possibly can. Panning over Busan here as G2 Esports are uh, looking 
to try and get towards that second ban phase in the draft. If you're unfamiliar with Bay, uh, he used to be a, a set player, and that in of itself, I, I don't think is particularly relevant to the tournament at hand when you played in the LCK, when you played in the Challengers. Um, but you actually made an astute <laughs> observation that we need to share with the world, which is that Bay still plays every champion like he's playing set. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he goes into melee range for the flanks <laughs> on his Ari to make sure that he can get those charms working. Um, just to provide a little bit of extra context, it was actually his best champion by a he, country oh, they mile. they won a lot of games with it. Yeah, when yep. he was playing um, in the LCK for Nongshim Red Force. And it was a difficult time for him uh, in the LCK before he moved on over. Uh, of course, spent some time in Challenger before heading towards PSG Talon to see what they could do uh, about replacing uh, Maple and River, which is some huge shoes uh, to fill for the squad. And uh, as you can see, yeah, slight game delay as we get this draft back working again. Pauses. But as we know. With LCK as, casters? Uh, yeah, as, as, oh. as uh, LCK um, commentators, we know that a champ select crash is the best kind because you can actually get back into the game. You don't have to worry about chrono breaking and things like this uh, during um, the early stages uh, of the game. So we will be back into it relatively quickly, guys. And we just beg for a little bit of patience while we take you on a bay journey down memory lane. No, I don't want to. It's, it's not a good journey, um, Atlas. It, it, it's a journey that starts with Underperforming in the LCK, then getting sent down to Challengers and getting replaced by a player called Fiesta. Yeah. Uh, who then, in the next split, actually gets the finals in Challengers. Yeah, um, we actually have just some of the best it, names in Challenger as well. Fiesta is among one of the best. There was a player that was added yesterday, and his name is Sponge. And just I, brilliant. I want him to, to get to the international stage. And I already talked a little bit about uh, G2 and, and how well Jankos and, and Caps have been doing, but uh, the bane for me was Targamus, who's also had just yeah. the best he has been brilliant. of performances. Um, just to catch you guys up, um, there was a client crash and the draft will be redone with exactly the same picks and bans up until then. We're not going to pretend that we are absolute geniuses as we read out all of the picks because that would be childish. And we've also done it basically every other time there has been a remake of a draft. So it's we are just going to get yeah, we are going to get through this one as quickly as possible until we can figure out exactly what Bay is uh, going to pick up against Caps or whether they just they decide to lock yeah. down a bottom lane or something like that. Of course, with Tran Tristana already there, there are certainly a uh, few supports that you would prefer to pair alongside her. So that might be the option that they are going to go towards as G2 haven't really revealed too much with uh, how their draft is going to function necessarily, as uh, Viego, of course, very versatile, and the LeBlanc, a similar story as well. And to get to get back to uh, the Targum's point I, I was making earlier, the best example to me was in uh, the match that hurt us the most, which was the match that they played against T1, where his tracking of Zeus and his ability yeah. to consistently hit uh, Key exhausts, uh, find grand entrances onto this pick uh, was to oh be one of the deciding goodness. factors, even with how well the rest of the team played. And it's really cool because if you ask people before the tournament, the list would be Guma Carrier, and in particular Carrier, expected yep. to be a standout man. He got MVP in the LCK as the first bot laner ever. And we um, feel better saying that now because his last few plays on the Nautilus in the last good, game yeah. was actually fantastic. But so we're feeling a little more justified. The, the fact that Flaken and Targamas were able to not only get ahead of Gala and Ming, but also of Guma and Carrier as just oh, an yeah. incredibly well performing bot lane is uh, such a cool storyline as it is actually the Sandra. No surprises there. Good against both the Callista and the LeBlanc. Uh, Callista with short range and her reliance uh, to do anything to hop around is not the biggest fan of getting locked down. Um, but we have also seen this counter pick a lot and it is still very reliant. I yeah. personally think Malzar is, is the truly foolproof way because <laughs> there is no one playing that. With Lissandra, it's been a bit more hit or miss. Yep, somewhere there is a nemesis with a wry grin on his face, <laughs> uh, as you mentioned, the power of the Malzaha. But uh, of course, this is the LCK special, and of course, Bay having spent a lot of time there, and also Bay with a very similar playstyle to Fly. And this was the one champion that we were very happy about Fly playing um, until he retired at the end of last year. So Bay, of course, was uh, a very similar player um, to Fly throughout his career in uh, Korea as well. 
So the Lissandra, certainly no stranger to him. They're now going to be banned away from Hanabi, and in fact, both of his most notable champions just taken off the board by G2. Ooh. And that is the Orn picked away from Broken Blade. I love this from PSG Talon. Also allows them to be so beefy with this composition. They will need some extra damage, but they only have a support slot left remaining. So Unified is going to have so much on his shoulders getting the damage down on this Tristana. And it forces a pivot away from G2, who uh, I, I would expect would have pivoted towards that. Love the Gragas. Oh, fantastic. Uh, incredible into anything that PSG have thus far. Uh, gets so much extra utility with the Kalista pick as well, being able to use uh, the ultimate. Uh, the one thing that G2 is suffering now from that I'd say that their previous comps, because again, I think they've had the draft actually basically every single yes. game in Rumble stage, uh, is that it is a comp that can backfire. This is relatively short range. The engage is good, uh, but if you don't execute the team fights well, if you don't, uh, if you're unable to pick up any laning leads either towards that Aatrox uh, or get the Kalista ahead, it can actually be really hard to play late game against the PSG comp, a front to back team fight that enables Unified, who has been one of the highlight players on PSG for the longest of times. Uh, I think is a is a really good angle here for PSG and reasonably as good as you're going to get the rel a little bit more ambivalent about yeah a little bit it Especially does it, it does layer a lot as far as um you know circles of cc that uh they do certainly have a circles. lot of availability yes i do that is certainly one of my uh my favorite things but like you were saying, I think Gragas is a beautiful masterstroke towards the end of the draft here for G2. The Aatrox is something that I uh, am a little bit more quizzical about in uh, my experience. On has been able to fend off Aatrox in the past, but it looks to me like G2 just want to slam this game very early on and then snowball it out of control, utilizing all of these champions that spike in the mid game. Uh, to find their advantages and you can't really fault them for it because they have done so very effectively throughout this tournament It's been a consistent thing for them and For PSG it would be Incredible for them to break the win streak that G2 has been able to build up for themselves, uh, but it's also unlikely and so it, the reward if it well, happens well, it is G2. The stats team as well has informed us that uh, last time when RNG were undefeated, that undefeated streak was broken by PSG. And so now there is a possibility that G2 could An suffer the chance. same fate. It was when they were 12-0 as well. And uh, right now, eight games in the group stage, four games. <gasps> in the Rumble stage. Coincidence? Probably. <laughs> but uh, we'll see whether PSG can have a you repeat of history. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> well, I couldn't finish the line. It would be, for, it's, it would be wrong. <laughs> I mean, it would be. Yeah. But I think, like, to be perfectly honest, um, I like the draft from PSG if they can hold on. This is definitely, uh, like, you are um, holding on to the cliff, trying desperately to climb back up. And if G2, you know, in true Scar what, fashion, what is, get is, the claws oh, okay. into the back of the hands, then it, it could be a, uh, a big problem. So it's a Lion King angle. It was a Lion King I, I reference. I thought you were going to go for, for something else. I've made myself sad um, thinking about that moment as well, and I want to apologize to everybody else who are then uh, just also... Just a little emotional damage feeling. early in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that's what, no, what no, we like to start do. your day. Yeah. Well, it's early in the morning here. Not in Korea, obviously. Well, yeah, that's very, very true. And of course, shout out to all the Australians. It's just, uh, it's just a chill afternoon, I think, about like 7 p.m., something like that. Is that afternoon? It's definitely not. No. Um, but I did the time calculation after I said afternoon. I appreciate drawing attention to it as uh, Caps welcome. and Bay now just are facing off here in the mid lane. And of course, we've uh, spoken about this matchup many, many times. It is, can be actually quite difficult for Lissandra in the early stages. Um, of course, Circle of Frost is your main power point. And uh, right there, you can see Bay actually trading very nicely here with Caps. But Circle of Frost, when the distortion comes in, you press your Circle of Frost, you get your Aftershock, and uh, you can then trade back decently well but there is still a lot of harass potential for the LeBlanc um, into this one. So it's by no means a hard counter or anything like that. It's also about how the later team fights are played out because there's been a lot of comments about this already, but uh, to echo, LeBlanc effectively plays like a poke champion as we do see uh, Juan getting spotted here, but looks like he's just opting into a normal full clear. Um, 
And reliably poking and looking for one taps, even in the later stages of the game, is so much harder uh, when you're playing against a Lissandra due to the ease of hitting a frozen tomb and um, especially for G2. Uh, if they try to start off a play as such uh, and Caps gets taken out, he has been uh, the core of the phalanx that has yeah. G2 finding a, a win in, in every single game that they certainly have feels had like far. Gerard Butler in this uh, particular G2 is Gerard yeah okay because 300 like you know and like he has all his Spartans and yeah no I, and hold, I, I hold off it. the Persians decently well yeah I mean, I, it's, I'd say they did an exceptional job yeah it's quite it's quite, it's quite good <laughs> anyway Bay's going to be going back uh, looking for a teleport back towards this lane having shoved out relatively well Chains are going to come through, but uh, Hanabi is just going to searingly charge himself out of the way, and he will be fine. And with the prior that G2 had been able to secure for themselves in bot side, uh, that wasn't really an angle uh, trying to look for a gank. Yankel's also going into the full clear as Ooh, they crash go down here. Yeah, Targamus having to flash to get himself out of the way. The ignite is ticking, but of course, not in too much trouble, but getting that summoner spell is going to be very valuable here for PSG as Caps. Gonna find the chain onto Bay, follows him all the way up the lane as Yankos. Can he actually find the damage? And G2 are not going to dive at this point in time. Fair bit of damage with that explosive charge onto Flackett as Unified going to rocket jump his way out. And certainly a lot of testing of one another in this early stage of the game. No one really finding an edge thus far. A lot of pressure. Summoners being forced, but no definitive win. And this is a very snowbally matchup, right? If you do get ahead. As uh, so flack it, and you can continuously look for the all ins, which uh, Gragas definitely enables. Then it becomes really hard for Unified to play. On the flip side, same thing. Uh, Kalista that is behind is a miserable experience overall. But thus far, with both teams being uh, aware where everyone is, uh, Yankos looking for a play, but Lissandra really utilizing the safety that she has with her claw as well as the extra tankiness from that aftershock uh, working out very, very well. And thus far, as you pointed out, um, it's it's a cliffhanger for PSG. And uh, about 20 minutes in, reinforcements will arrive. Although I guess they are the reinforcements themselves. <laughs> and yep. that's, that's what you're looking towards. But this part of the la this part of the game should go well, right? Like, it, it makes sense. G2, uh, they haven't really won any of their games through straight up stomping laning phase. It's no. about either Yankos finding exceptional gank angles, uh, all the skirmishes, all the fights. And that is something that this G2 comp does uh, yeah. very, very well. It is an understatement thus yeah. far this tournament. It's what and it does. Yeah. Honestly, no matter how far G2 fall behind, as long as their Nexus is still alive, I will not be convinced that they're going to lose. Oh, no. Um, we've been burnt by that in the past. And so PSG will certainly have to wait it out because their composition does want to scale. Even then, G2 have been able to find some of these angles. But I think with what PSG have put together, you just get late game insurance against this team and you're going to be feeling good about it. Because G2 navigating those later stages, finding those avenues of victory has been so, so good. So try and take as many of them away in the late game as you can as Juhan almost dies to the Infernal Drake, but he will survive. Of course, yeah, it's not too much of an issue with Smite available. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, it's always fine. And now Hextech um, Drake to come in, and I'm possibly going to get baited for another Cloud Soul. Sure, surely we'll get one. Perhaps, as Bellow's Breath comes out to avoid being pulled back by the Infernal Chains with Broken Ooh, Blade, just trying Kai to Wing. push Hanabi away. Is Yeah, Kai Wing's coming up very know. early on. Yankos clearing out this Krug camp as... Yeah, Kaiwing still unseen, as let's see, the knockup does come forward, Yankos making his way in, the call of the Forge God has come through, and that's going to be used to try and turn onto Yankos here, as Juhan is in the area, Crashdown comes through for the extra CC, and there is so much of it, first blood goes to Kaiwing, who continues his fantastic oh, run here of the Rumble stages, base rotated over as well, there's the Frozen Tomb, it's Broken Blade, now going to get caught out. They've just got so many snares, so many knockups, but not a whole host of damage as they'd have to dive in a turret caps over to the side as well. Not going to go one versus four. And while this is a nice play, look at what they give up. Look at what Unified is facing here. Entire wave is going to go into the turret. So many plates going over. I don't think you've gotten enough yet. Oh dear. Caps takes Lee in for a walk. And uh, he's going to walk him all the way back to the death chamber. 
as Broken Blade makes his way back towards the top side. And yeah, it looked good for PSG until it absolutely didn't. Chronicle. Yeah, the the deep chase onto Broken Blade um, and, and then not getting him uh, was a very unfortunate scenario because so many resources were invested toward that topside play. And I actually really like the pick on Yankees. That part is great. That immediately turned it into plates, uh, turned it into vision that can allow you to actually contest. Although I argue you don't want to contest the Herald either way, but uh, pretty sure that Yankos got spotted on this initial ward here and that they are aware uh, of his position. Uh, and you see, G2 also sees you, uh, Juana, and they're like, we're good, right? We still have time because Kai Wing himself has not been spotted uh, as they 100 to 0 Yankos without too much problem. Hanabi. Flashes a Flash Wolf emote, uh, and that part was great. <laughs> I actually thought that with Bay getting that roam, it would have worked out very well. And something we didn't even talk about is Lissandra's ability uh, to play towards side lanes and set up play, set up reactive dives that do the amount of lockdown that she has available. But it didn't actually work out. They don't get Broken Blade, and they sacrifice so much resources on the bot side of the map. Two plates uh, and, and Unified getting zoned up is actually still relatively even. Uh, and so is the gold score. So, yeah. And also, all. after the reset comes through, they lose the Rift Herald at the same time. So it's theoretically four plates that they lose oh, that for that situation yeah. as well. Good point. Yeah, because the reset timing was just a little bit unfortunate after yeah, investing John. so much towards the top side and John dying. Yeah, um, yeah adding to it. I Not call friendly. it a reset to just uh, take some of the pressure a off. A friendly but, reset. Yeah, just a reset. Forced reset. You know, a, they're low death timers, right? Um, yeah. But no, not working out so well here for PSG. But early days, and you can see it's not... Oh, dear. Oh, poor Bay. Wow, it really is the fly treatment, isn't it? As uh, yeah, Juran's going to take the Grom. I'm going to make you walk over, and then I'm <laughs> yeah. taking it. Can you help me? Le can you help leash for me? <laughs> Oh, dear. That's the, uh, actually a really big problem, because uh, Lissandra, one of the things that she can run into, especially pre-Lost Chapter, is mana issues. Uh, and being stuck in lane with no mana as Lissandra, no ability to influence skirmishes and fights uh, of possible setups in side lanes, is it's, it's really bad. And to make it even worse, you're not giving... Ooh. Ooh. gonna cancel. Which is nice. Very nice. Um, you're not even giving it to like Carthus or, or or a champion that actually uses blue buff well. It's Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Subpar, I'd no. say. Yeah. It's not exactly the optimal outcome of the situation. However, not the end of the world either. As Rift Herald's going to come down towards the bottom side. This is exactly what we were talking about. Two plates were picked up with the over investment, and now as the Herald comes down, Flack is going to get even more. As Juhan's going to come through, see whether they can get them at least off the last plate of this turret. And of course, for the first turret bloke, which will be a lot of gold to be put towards G2. And every bit of early gold that they pick up is very, very valuable. Because G2 do want to be taking over this game in, that mid in the mid game. And in that regard, the initial Drake being picked up by PSG is actually great. Because... Uh, if G2, as expected, will take the complete overhand in any skirmishes from now till basically 20, 25 minutes from here, uh, actual Drake stacking is not going to get them to a actual soul up until... The oh, Bay. Yeah, Frozen Tomb comes down. That is going to be a free Q from Juhan as now he flashes, gets the kick to finish off the kill onto Cap. Safeguard to get himself out as Bay is going to be helpful there. Decent stun, though, to come in as Safeguard once again onto the ward that Juhan had prepared. And they will be able to get out Scott free as the Everfrost comes through for our MasterCard Mythic from Caps in the grave. Now the Force Reset coming through here. <laughs> yeah, there we uh, go. These moments are really big uh, because PSG, I'd say, barring out execution from these two, which is a very, very real threat uh, that yep. I'm sure everyone, every PSG I like how we have, to, we have to put in that uh, caveat every single well, time. We, yes, I mean, we G2. do. I, I've seen this exact thing also happen in the LCK, where it's like, Fred and Brian, you know, they draft a team fight, calm. <laughs> And then they're playing against the team that just crushes them uh, in, in 20 minutes. But giving over multiple drakes and taking some of these kills to take out the tempo, the wind of the sails, G2 is really, really yeah. nice. Well, there it is. Magnus Storm coming through here from Kaiwing as the Fates call comes out. Flacken still trying to get these auto attacks in. Flash out from Kaiwing. They already have the drake secured on PSG's side as Rocket Jump gets unified out of there. Caps darting on in, trying to take down this Tristana. 
but he will get Buster shotted out of there. G2 were unable to deny the Drake. So two have been picked up here by PSG, but now it's a mountain soul. If PSG can get more, then I don't, it's gonna be even more difficult for G2. Yeah, because a lot of the win conditions for G2, even in late game scenarios, are reliant on effectively blowing up a key member of PSG. And as we get further into the game, uh, that's just unified. Like, Alessandra damage is nothing, yeah. not going to be anything to write home about. Uh, and uh, both Lee and Orn uh, have a decent damage, but it's not really going to be something uh, that is going to hold you over in late game team fights. But when you add a Mountain Soul, it becomes so much harder to hunt it to zero the Tristana. And giving uh, any Mountain Drake to Orn in of itself yeah. already feels horrible, let alone to an Orn and an Aftershock Lissandra and a Rel. Like, this beefy comp from PSG is going to be incredibly hard to work through and it puts more pressure on G2. And they do have a gold lead, but I'm gonna start to see... I need to see some of these turrets fail. Thank you, Caps. That would be lovely. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's right gonna go time. back to his distortion. And that does mean that that uh, first turret will go down for G2. So this is the start of that snowball. And on the other side of the coin, the fact that it's a Mountain Soul means that there's a possible four stack here for G2. And if they can do that, then it doesn't really matter well, that Orn is there yeah. as, a, yeah. as a big tanky <laughs> boy for the front line because Broken Blade can build like full damage and still be a mega tank um, at a situation like that. So certainly two sides to every coin and G2 will have to start putting pressure on here, utilizing that slight gold advantage that they have at this point in time. And we talked a lot already about G2, the incredible form that they've been in, how well they've been performing this MSI. But we also got to talk about PSG getting so much better because I'm not expecting this after their group stage. Yeah, I would agree. Broken Blade over the wall here is uh, PSG thinking about locking down Shirley. G2 having other ideas and they will just start it up. Hanabi is very far away from this fight. Just let it go. Yeah, I let think, it go, PSG. I think it's fighting okay. for this one is a bit of a, a risk. One could say they're getting information of the area, but yes, they are just going to give it away. That's precisely what you want if you're a PSG fan is now inside track on the mid lane. It will crash a minion wave, but I don't think they're going to be able to get any meaningful damage onto the turret. Two and a half minutes on that Drake, likely to be where the next scuffle is going to begin. And thus far, because of all the turrets, uh, of course, the Caps getting first turret blood just now, uh, not being taken, it's, it's really hard for G2 to actually start strangling out PSG. And that's something that they're gonna need to do. Defensive vision is still there, but free men play towards the top side. Yeah, Bay. Certainly a lot of abilities that can keep okay. him alive. And they are gonna get the teleport out of Hanabi as well. So yeah, a lot of tankiness to get through here. And G2 are gonna think better of it, but Targamus is going to look for that stun onto Kai Wing. He gets lit up in the air, but you can see the knockups now. The chain CC, this choke point, not good for G2. There's the knockup, a lot of damage onto Caps. He's burning, but he is able to get out of there. The clone will be taken down. That's not the real one. They're not gonna lose anyone in that moment. You did see what PSG's comp is capable of, but damage isn't in the list. It's the problem. They can't secure these kills as effectively. That's a multi-first moment right there, because if G2 committed a little bit more into that choke point against a team with as much CC as PSG, yeah. uh, that could have been a game breaker right there. Not the case. Everyone on G2 gets out. Uh, they don't actually fully commit. Caps doesn't lose his, uh, lose his life. No gold goes over. Because if Unified picks up a couple of points at this point in the game, or a couple of kills, rather, at this point in the game, uh, G2's task becomes much harder. I do still think that if they have the space, if it's PSG that needs to move on to them, and they don't funnel into the choke point, they should have an easy job of picking up this early Drake. And I'm really happy that you point out the lack of damage because every single Mountain Drake that G2 is going to pick up is going to make it harder for PSG. And yeah, yeah once Unified hits six items, I'm sure he'll get through like two people at some point. Uh, but it's gonna take a while. It certainly will. And uh, G2 will not be missing a lot of damage with their composition on the other hand. So. Keep your eyes on the Tristana. She is going to be so important for PSG. She has the highest range in this game by far, even just at level 10, I believe, just because Callista isn't known for her ability to hit things from far away. So eyes are going to be glued to Unified as these fights continue. Slight advantage here for G2, but they are looking to try and push that one forward as this Drake is spawning. Kai Wing spotted on the ward. Barrel goes down from Targamus as well as Caps moves his way up. Broken Blade. Um, Unleash Teleport at the ready and can get himself in here if they would like. It's a really nice Everfrost. The Unified not going to be chained up. It does take an explosive charge worth of damage. Surely going to try and distract PSG. Is now Bane looking for his opportunity. There it is, the Magnus Storm on 
one, two, three, after the Frozen Tomb Unified. Can you get the free hits off the answer? So far is yes, but does it even matter as Kaiwing has already fallen and Juhan has to get himself out of there. Chain is going to miss. Decent juke there from the Lee Sin, but PSG no way back into this, and it should be the first Mountain going to G2. Really big risk there from PSG because I don't think you need to contest this in the first place, but if that play is a little bit more well coordinated, because Bay went in, I think, half a second too early, the rest of his team not actually able to follow up, and G2 get the crucial Drake. They know they needed to win the skirmish. Jankos is able to survive the initial burst coming through uh, in no large part thanks to the tenacity he got from those Merc threats. And G2 getting a pivotal win here in this skirmish surrounding the third Drake. Because yep. Saw, if so, PSG got Saw point at this point, like that's that's when you really start to get worried. Yeah, and that is, that is any Drake that they can pick up in the next little while, right? The clock is in their favor the longer it goes. But still, a fight like this demonstrating that G2 right now are very, very strong as Bay sets up for a really nice Magnus Storm on the side of Kaiwin. And yeah, crucially here, uh, not actually able to get in enough damage. Jankos is able to get out of it very quickly. Unified wants to Rocker jump in, but he still needs to kind of stay away from the core of the fight, otherwise he will get targeted, CC'd and blown up. Uh, and if you don't time that 100% perfectly, you're just not going to be able to do enough damage. Uh, because again, you, your comp, yeah. effectively single threat, and now G2 have their eyes on this mid lane turret, and that would really start to break open the map, right? That's when you can start setting up extremely deep vision lines, make it hard for PSG to actually go in and find that 5v5 team fight. Oh, Infernal Chains are going to connect onto Unified. He uses the rocket jump. Targum to try and get himself out oh. of the way. You can see the fear in this Tristana as yet. Targum is possibly caught out here on the other side. He does go golden. Fate's Call is available, so not in any trouble whatsoever as Flacken makes his way over. PSG back to this mid lane. Feeling a bit K Rammy at this stage, but <laughs> they do want to try and break open this map to give Bay more of these angles to get in there with the claw and uh, put people in the tomb. As Unified Ooh. has to be a little bit careful this Caps. far up. Caps wrapping his way over. They have decent vision, and he knows about it as he clears out that ward in the river and then slinks his way back into Fog of War. That's something that Lyric mentioned earlier on the desk as well. Uh, as servers make it seem like, nope, not going to have uh, any action, at least for now. Um, where how different the read of certain situations is depending on teams, depending on the meta, depending on the region. Uh, and I wonder if you put a different type of cost, a different type of analyst from the LPL, and we're like, no, give up that Drake, you can skip. You can take it, he's like, <laughs> yeah. like, because we're LCK casters, we've seen that happen a million times. Yeah, no, just like, give it away, give it away. How the call be, you know? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Interesting to think about. We'll have to have a conversation about it later. We should ask them. Yeah, yeah. maybe you could put something on Twitter, I guess, uh, after the conversation has come through. As G2 looking to return this favor. Is this turret relatively low? Caps over the wall. Fantastic Everfrost is the explosive cast. Not exactly the same situation as Bay flashes forward. They find the kickback. As it's a great knock on the flak and almost surviving. He burns down at the last second. They trade. Callista for Lee Sin, but Broken Blade is still very dangerous. And a one-for-one one isn't a win here for PSG, but when they're behind, they will definitely take it. Still Kaiwing looking for a little bit more. No Magnet Storm this, si this time, but the Buster Shot is there, so Unified feeling a little bit safer. Of course, works quite effectively to deny distortions in from Caps and things like this. But still, PSG not wanting to try and flip for anything, and 3-3 three to three is the kill score right now. This game very, very close, even if the gold says it's a bit in G2's favor. With the composition PSG have as the game goes on, you have to feel like things could get better for them. And it's to be somewhat of a throwback to what we saw in the G2 T1 game, where T1, yeah, they had a 5k gold lead, right? The early game was going very well, uh, but at some point, G2 just grouped up and uh, G2 was completely or was able to completely shut out any playmaking potential from T1. There was never any stragglers. Everyone was always helped by someone else, was always flanked. Vision was secured collectively. And because of that, the composition, which when it comes to skirmishes had an incredibly good time, was never able to actually fight anything but a 5v5. And PSG is trying to effectively do the same thing to G2 here. And now for PSG, the question becomes, can they do the same thing that G2 did, which is leave no openings. Because if there is an opening, you know G2 is gonna gonna find it. If Unified is just a fraction too far forward for a second, he gets hunted to zero. Yeah. No, this so much is on whether Unified can keep himself alive in these fights. 
Ooh, and whether Bane items. can actually pull the trigger at the right times, right? The follow-up from PSG is so fantastic, but it needs to be Bay that gets in there with the Frozen Tomb to lock down that first target so that PSG can get themselves into a winning position. Targum is trying to get some vision down here as G2 trying to set up the trap where they can. Kaiwing not going to overstep, spots them moving up the river here is now Broken Blade. Alongside as well, and both teams looking to catch each other in transition. A lot of players now slinking throughout the fog of war. The Drake has now spawned. PSG, they desperately want to get to that soul point. And G2 want to continue snack, stacking these mountains. It's pivotal for both sides. Is now Broken Blade on the flank, but he is spotted out by PSG. Control vision absolutely everywhere. The cross goes slightly wide there from Bay, but he gets snared up. Can't find his way into the fight. Now down to about 50% health. There's now Broken Brave back with the team. Juan looking to get rid of Caps, who's now moving back into this battle. It's going to be secured by Jankos, but can the fight actually be won as well? Unified finds a couple of Goomba Sons, and now they might be able to find their team fight. Broken Blade looking to get on top of him, but it's not going to work out. Caps gets flashed out of the way of, and he will not be able to secure the kill on the Unified, who blast cones back to his team, and PSG win the team fight. Pings towards the Baron, they're going to run. Try and make it. Two teleports available. 30 seconds on Broken Blade. And they got the Mountain Drake, but the fight was won by PSG, and if they can get the Baron, that's a trade you'll take any time. Absolutely. PSG will then be able to get more of that standing gold off the map as well as now Caps desperately wanting to try and cause some trouble for PSG. He will spot them with the Scryer's Bloom. That's it me. is so difficult. One versus five, especially with the amount of CC available here by PSG. But Caps does have a fair bit of damage with the Void Stuff already completed. And he has to watch as this Baron gets taken down. Targum is here just a little bit too late. And as you say, Broken Blade is going to be there. The Teleport is available as well, but it's a very dangerous one if he goes for it. And there are no wards in the enemy jungle. PSG make the right call. They secure the Baron and already that's an extra 1,500 gold they can get for themselves. We check out the replay. And I was somewhat worried when this fight started for PSG because it was very much a fight on two fronts. On the top half, we have Broken Blade and Caps putting Fred on Unified and Juhan. Uh, but fortunately for PSG, they're still at the point of the game where there's enough damage coming through from Brave, from Hanabi. That body slam there, I thought that was going to be a turning point from Tarkov. Yeah, the body slam people, was just amazing. But two of his most effective damage dealers in Caps and Broken Blade couldn't actually make it to Unify because of how broken up the fight was. And Jankos secures the Drake, but yeah. not going to be enough. Yep. Still, I think uh, making sure that they avoid Soul Point for PSG is still fantastic, it's still but it's not going to be uh, taking away any of the worries that G2 have of that situation. These team fights, they're not going to get all that much better as this game goes on. It's going to be, ha it's going to have to be some of that G2 magic to try and pick off the members of PSG unawares, as Bay. We'll be able to lock down the top outer turret, and as these start dropping, PSG will move further and further ahead. And on the first day of Desk, uh, we talked about PSG Talon, and I said, in all my confidence, this was also when we fought T1 was going to win, so there was, a, there was a lot of that going around. Um, there has no to be to a be worse up. team in every single group, and unfortunately, I think that team is PSG. And I think that was a warranted statement after seeing their group stage, which was no, I agree. not impressive in terms of drafts, in terms of cohesiveness of the team. And would it not be fitting if it's this team that ends G2's win streak? Yeah. Like, especially considering G2's... Especially history. considering the fact that they did it to RNG yeah. last time! Oh, it's crazy. There are, so, there are just so many angles, but exactly right. That's and uh, counting G2 out is a mistake that our region has made um, already this tournament. Can you not remind me? Um, well, I, I, I've done it a couple of times now, so I guess my answer is no. As uh, Targamus going to take a drink, look to clear out some of this vision. As G2 now on the back foot, trying to just weather the storm. 2.5k on the Red Bull Baron power play. And G2 now just trying to defend their base. And the big thing that you're looking for as G2 is a flank angle. A broken blade and Caps can get into the back line. That's your angle, but look at the well, free wards. It's hard to be just walking forward, looking to lock this one down. The turret is going to fall, and now broken blade is taken down. Now it's the frozen thralls that G2 have to worry about as well. Two already it. taken down. PSG, can they just push forward? This is nutty. They've got five still alive. And they're like, late game composition? Nah, we're just going to win at 27 minutes as base flashing forward. Flacken now trying to dance his way out of the fight, but already they've taken everyone down. Caps is the last man standing, but not for long. That's the ace of PSG repeat history. The second Nexus turn and the Nexus will be taken down, and G2 will lose their first Nexus.
Masters of MSI 2022 to PSG Talon. Team fighting reigns supreme. As PSG Talon reminds them, that, yeah, groups, maybe not the best thing, but we got the semis last time, and you would make a big mistake if you count us out before the groups is done. I remember I was there watching season two, all right? We've seen players from this region do amazing things. How many Flash Wolf emote spams did we see in that game? <laughs> if only there was a Taipei Assassin skin used. <laughs> um, but it did not happen. PSG Talon, though, need, they deserve this bow so, so much. Because, like you said, you were one of the people that counted them out, even Saigon Buffalo, looking like they were a step ahead. But it is like this is a team that has been tenacious for so long. When when Harnaby joined Flash Wolves, that's what that team was known for as well. And PSG Talon finally showing us on the world stage what they're capable of. Two responses: Onzo P, clearly <laughs> only <laughs> yeah. takeaway I can have there. Yeah. And secondly, I don't think this changes anything about the position of no, G2 absolutely not. within the group. What it does do is make. What we thought was a top three, bottom three, 